G'day trendsetters, I'm John with Gravel Cyclists and I'm coming to you today on a very cold day here in North Central Florida, 36 degrees Fahrenheit or about three degrees Celsius with a review of a bike I've been putting through the ringer. This is the 51 Bikes Assassin Gravel Bike. If you're a regular to this channel, the gravelcyclist.com website, the Gravel Cyclist Instagram and Facebook accounts, you will likely have seen my unboxing and features video and my sneak peek photographs of my review process up to this point of this very bike. For those folks who do not follow my social media, do yourself a favor and check them out in the links below. First, a little company history about Dublin, Ireland based 51 Bikes. The company was founded in 2016 by Mr. Aidan Duff, a former professional cyclist who turned his hand to the creation of bespoke bicycles. The name 51 is a homage to a special race number used in European professional road cycling. Usually that number is reserved for team leaders or special riders and originally came about around the time of Mr. Eddie Merckx. He made that number quite famous in his heyday. As I mentioned earlier, 51 Bikes specializes in custom bespoke bikes from their Dublin Island headquarters, from special frame designs to gorgeous custom paint and other finer details. This Assassin Gravel bike to my right is a departure from 51's usual manner of producing bikes in that it was manufactured in Asia to the company's exacting standards. This bike is available with three color options, British Racing Green, as you see here. Currently, the bike is absolutely filthy, as it should be most of the time. Rothmans Racing Blue and complete bespoke paint. Anything goes from wild to mild. The Assassin features a multi-blend Torre carbon fiber frame from three different types of carbon fiber with tire clearance front and rear for 650B and 700C by 47 millimeters. But I'm pretty confident you could fit 50 millimeter tires inside this bike, but of course, that wouldn't allow for a whole ton of mud clearance. There's also provision for one by or two by drivetrains. And as you can see in this example, a two by drivetrain, namely the excellent SRAM rival ETAP access. And I have a full review of that group set linked below. The stock build wheel set that arrived with this bike, hold on one second, right here. This is the DT Swiss G1800 wheel set shod with WTB Riddler tires and 700C by 45 millimeter. I saved this wheel set for some of the more gnarlier riding that I did that you'll see during my ride experience part of this review. For much of the review, I rode the excellent and ultralight Envy G23 wheels with bird spokes. You can also check out a review of this wheel set linked below. The Assassin is touted as a progressive gravel bike. Nowadays, that generally means a longer top tube, shorter stem, almost mountain bike like in design. 51 isn't alone with this concept. There are several manufacturers circa the time of this video with bikes designed in a similar manner. This isn't my favorite geometry, but I will say 51's take has worked fabulously for me, and I have my position locked in after just one short shakedown ride. The Assassin features adjustable geometry courtesy of a flip chip system at the front and rear of the bike. This is not the first bike I've reviewed with such a feature. In fact, this design has been around for a couple of years. At the rear of the bike, you get three different positions, short, medium, and long, and each position change affects the overall chainstay length by five millimeter increments. Theoretically, the short position gives you agility, the long position stability, and the middle, the best of both worlds. I rode the bike in the middle position for much of this review. The fork has two positions, high and low. Low provides longer trail and a slacker head tube angle, best suited to more aggressive riding on challenging terrain, whilst high creates shorter trail and a steeper head angle. Really nice for racing, spirited rides, or not so rough terrain. I've ridden both positions extensively, more on that later. Speaking of geometry, 
This is what the size medium, this example here, looks like on paper in the rear middle position and on the low front position. So in the middle rear and low front position, you get a wheelbase of 1,052 millimeters, or middle rear and front high, you get 1,057 millimeters. Of interest, the trail figures for this bike are uniform across the board in all chip positions, no matter the size of bike. And now it's time for a little demonstration of how simple it is to swap the flip chip on the fork. Currently, the chip resides in the bottom position. For this exercise, I'm going to swap the chip to the higher position. Thus, I'll need to remove the fixing bolt right there, swap this around, and likewise on the other side of the fork. 2.5 millimeter Allen key required. And you can see the little flip mechanism is already loosened off. Apologies for the bright sunshine here. All right, pop out the little chip let's get them in focus there we go flip around then simply reinstall the fixing screw that operation is done repeat the process from the other side I have to say I've flipped a few chips and this one is the easiest to deal with. Reinstall. And then tighten down the fixing bolt. Being careful not to over tighten. And reinstall the front wheel. All right, Bob's your uncle, no work and furries. One thing you might be wondering, did I adjust the position of the front brake to account for the change I made in the chip position? That is a no. Other features of the Assassin, all of the cables are internalized, including through the fork, the front brake runs through the right side of the fork. And if you happen to utilize a dynamo front hub for generating power, that also is internalized through the left side of the fork. There's also support for an internalized dropper seat post and for bolter cage mounts, you get the usual two places, one on top of the down tube, one on the seat tube and a bonus bolter cage mount beneath the down tube. And not forgetting my favorite mounting point atop the top tube, in this case with an Apadura top tube racing bag and I had that linked as well in the description below. The fork also features mounts on each leg for additional versatility. Finally, the bottom bracket standard is threaded T47, and another nice feature, beneath the removable down to protector, you get access to the inside of the frame. And for folks who run Shimano's DI2 electronic drivetrain, the battery resides behind that protector. So that's the tech features covered. Let's find out now how the 51 Bikes Assassin gravel bike rides. Weighing in at near 21.5 pounds or 9.7 kilos with the stock DT1800 wheels, Riddler 700C by 45 millimeter tires, King titanium bottle cages and Garmin XC200 pedals, the Assassin isn't overly light, but once I swapped the wheels for the Envy Bird spoke wheels I showed earlier, the bike's overall weight dropped by close to two pounds or almost a four kilogram of weight. Whilst lightweight is not this bike's primary focus, it's one you should spec out carefully if you're interested in shedding some grams. On the positive, it took just one 25 mile shakedown ride to dial in my fit, and despite all of my reservations about this longer top tube, shorter stem concept, the Assassin felt spot on, the best I've felt aboard any bike of this type. This is handy, as the second ride aboard the Assassin was 200 miles of Florida mixed surface roads in one day, west coast to east coast, part of the King's Road event hosted by the single track Samurai. I kept the fork in the low position and the rear in the middle position. 200 miles isn't something you can bluff in terms of fitness or bike setup, and this was a very solid test. Between the wheelbase and the long trail fork setting, the Assassin feels stable and predictable, but steering didn't feel overly slow. 
Rather, I feel you garner a happy medium of control for dodgy terrain, whilst the fork imbibes confidence turning into corners. Clearly the shorter stem is helping here, and at the rear wheel with your weight distributed appropriately, you get traction and power transfer, something I really appreciate on loose terrain. I especially felt this riding a dodgy brick road sector, complete with many sandy spots under the cover of darkness. This adventure required me to keep a light touch on the handlebar and focus on pedaling a high cadence with my weight pushed back. Once I got into my groove, and good skills do help, I was the first rider through this 8 mile sector of the drop bar bikes that were present. The remainder of this course was a huge mixed bag from fast forest roads that featured more craters than the aftermath of a B-52 carpet bombing run and some hellacious washboard to tough sandy roads. Tire clearance is impressive and the taller than most bottom bracket drop works perfectly for bigger tire casings. Case in point, zero pedal strikes when I chose to ride this bike at the 2022 Tour de Falasco, a 50 mile mountain bike ride in North Florida. Would I recommend riding a rigid bike on routy trails? negative but i was decently competitive in the speed department with a ride time of just over five hours the assassin handled absolutely everything i threw at it including some dicey moments when i pointed towards a routine drop off wait back and hope for the best to quote a well-used cliche, this was underbiking at its finest. Flipping the forks chip as I demonstrated earlier is almost akin from riding a cruiser motorcycle in the low position to a track focused motorcycle in the high position. The difference was enough to be noticeable and this would be a great setup for spirited riding and racing, particularly when you run the rear chip in its most forward position. This wouldn't be my bike of choice for a shorter, spirited, mixed surface group ride with my mates, but when you're talking about rides or events clocking over 100 miles, now we're talking. With that said, I really preferred the low fork setting for my general riding about, along with the middle rear chip position. The Assassin just felt extra comfortable in this configuration. This is important because the Assassin feels quite stiff for a bike of this nature, but with huge tire clearance, dropping the tire pressure solves that problem. I have to say, I'm really stoked the bike industry has finally caught up with my gripes concerning bike designs from just a few years ago. It's great to see clearance of 700C by 47mm and greater nowadays. Around 2013, I built a drop bar mountain bike just to solve this tire clearance dilemma for the gnarly events I was partaking in at the time. The Assassin doesn't feel as sprightly as more performance oriented gravel bikes. This is evident pushing it out of the saddle or climbing, but this bike is bomb proof stable and confidence inspiring when descending or riding rough and dodgy terrain. Drivetrain support, I love the 2x, so I'm chuffed to see the 51 isn't jamming 1x only down everybody's throats. We like choices. Overall, I like how this bike looks with its integrated cables, beautiful paint, and not over the top branding. This bike won't be for everyone, but as far as ultra versatile gravel bikes with adjustable chip geometry, longer top tubes, and shorter stems, I feel the Assassin is the standout option at the time of this video. The Assassin is a pricey bike. You're looking at about three and a half thousand euro or about US $4,000 for the frame and fork before you factor in any build kits, wheels, and so on. This bike is a media sample, so its spec is likely going to differ from the pre-built bikes available direct from 51 Bikes. So there you have it, my review of the extremely versatile 51 Assassin gravel bike. I realize at the time of this video, there is a smorgasbord a plethora, a cornucopia of gravel bikes on the market for you to choose from. So I hope that my review went some way in helping you make an informed purchase decision. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel for no bull gravel bike reviews such as this, product reviews, ride experience videos, and other madness, as all of it is released to the channel. I'll see you in the next video. And it's time to get my ass inside because it is freezing out here.